You know, coming from a different world and only being a politician for a short period of time, how am I doing? Am I doing okay? I'm president. <laughs> hey, I'm president. Can you believe it, right? Can you believe it? Joining me now, Jenny Jardin, who's a breast cancer survivor and founder and co-editor of Boing Boing, and Dan Savage, nationally syndicated columnist and host of the Savage Love Cast. Jenny, let me start with you because we've had you on before to talk about your own experience with Obamacare, uh, cancer treatment, and I was thinking about you today about how you felt, processed what happened today. It's devastating, Chris. It's kind of like getting a cancer diagnosis. You know, one of the first things I, saw, I thought of was how people always talked about cancer like a battle. Cancer was just a disease. It's just cellular biology. It was just some of my cells deciding that they didn't want to behave anymore and they wanted to create tumors and infest my lymph nodes and metastasize. And that's kind of what it, 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 it feels like that's what's happening. You know, America is like a body. And we have to take care of the entire body. Every single cell in this country, every single person in this country deserves life. And we've got to get our priorities back in order. I don't understand how our lawmakers, our leaders, can be so lacking in empathy that this day happened. I didn't survive chemo and radiation and surgery and more surgeries only to wonder if I'm going to be able to live, if access is going to be taken away entirely, not just for me, but for 24 million or more people just like me who just want to live. You know, today was a day that I think a lot of people thought was going to come earlier. Uh, you know, the day one, people thought, well, they're going to get repeal and replace Obamacare, and they, 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 you know, they fought and they fought, they lost. The, the initial rounds. They passed this today. They still have a long way to go. The other thing that happened in the Rose Garden today was another thing where it looked like it was going to be a big, bad day, substantively, for a lot of people in this country. For the LGBT community. For the LGBT community, we had early leaks about what it might be. People were, were prepared. And then this thing happened. And the ACLU said, OK. The big nothing burger. And it feels like if one or two things connect them, to, to Shani's point about battling, is that, you know, the fight of politics matters a lot, probably more than it has in a long time. And they keep threatening the LGBT community and rattling the, the, the saber, and that's nerve-wracking and, and unsettling. And it's important to remember that uh, people who need health care, immigrants, women of color, people who need access to reproductive health care services are also queer people, many of them. So queer people are being attacked by the Trump administration on many, many fronts, even if they haven't directly targeted us yet, although they do keep threatening to target us. And the executive order that was feared today would have created this huge carve out that basically allowed for discrimination against LGBT people and women who've had abortions or premarital sex if it uh, violated someone's deeply held, sincere right. religious beliefs and basically legalized wholesale discrimination they, against people. But here's the National Center for Transgender Equality, which I think is an important statement to read because it gets to the elemental issue here. Thanks to the overwhelming pushback from so many communities. President Trump stopped short today of explicitly endorsing anti-LGBT discrimination. This vaguely worded order is clearly aimed at providing a license to discriminate. Uh, President Trump has simply asked others in his administration to do much of his dirty work. But it still feels, I think, in the LGBT community like there is a gun pointed at us and the finger's on the trigger but hasn't been pulled yet. And the religious right is freaking out. Brian Fisher, American Family Association. They're, they're furious. They're furious at Trump. And, and they're going to push them. Right. And, and Jenny, that, that gets to this sort of question of, of where you think of yourself and other folks like you for whom this is life and death and millions mm -hmm. of others who have family members for whom this is life and death. Like, the energy of investing yourself in the in in fighting the for the political outcome you want to see happen it's not a political outcome it's a human outcome this isn't the america that i love the america that i love cares about my right to life even though i'm 46 years past being a fetus the america that i love loves diversity it knows that children, you know, like Jimmy Kimmel's kid, God bless him for saying yeah. what he did the other night, knows that those babies weren't born into the world with some kind of original sin that makes some of them worthy of death and the others worthy of life. This isn't robbing Peter to pay Paul. This is killing Peter to pay Paul. This isn't America. One of the ironies, I think, of this moment is that 
I think partly in th thanks to Trump and the lies that he told to the Republican base while he was campaigning, there is now majority support in the country uh, for the idea that the government does have responsibility to provide all citizens with access to health care. And that is a sea change. To Shenny's point and to the point that Jimmy Kimmel was making tacitly, I have never seen support for single payer as a kind of common assumption higher in my adult lifehood. And, and there is a lot more fight left to go. And I'm really curious to see where this ends up. There are people on the right already warning that that is the path that we have been, we have been put on. Jenny Jardin, uh, thank you as always. And Dan Savage, thank you. Thank Thanks you. We're going to fight for every single one of you, America. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.